experienced a person who has maybe gone through something similar that you uh, have gone through, um, but you didn't really know the words to help them out, and you really wished you would have said something to them in your interaction with them. Okay, good. So the point of this talk is to hopefully um, make your hands go down for that last question. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to make your story fit. Um, I realize that's a very aggressive <laughs> first picture to have uh, on the screen for y'all. Um, there's a hand in there because in Alabama, everyone gets married by like 25. Um, so that's from one of my friend's engagements. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at you, Caroline. So you, fit, you fit the stigma. But, um, yeah. but anyways, um, this, is, uh, this is a picture of my mom. Um, probably my biggest inspiration in my life. Um, and before I tell you how to make your story fit, I want to tell you a little bit about mine. Um, when I was five years old, my parents got divorced, um, and I felt pretty much the same. Um, my dad was involved in my life. Uh, my mom made it a point that we saw him all the time, and nothing really felt different. Um, my mom was a NICU um, nurse, and then went back to school um, to become a CRNA, all by having three kids and being a single mother, putting us through private school. Um, on January 14th of 2007, my mom was killed in a car accident by a drunk driver on her way home from a weekend shift. And um, I felt lost. I had lost the person that meant the most to me and had taught me everything that I find in, as a good quality in myself. Um, and I didn't really have time to grieve because my parents were divorced and my um, mom's side of the family didn't like my dad, so we went immediately into uh, some court cases where they wanted custody of me and my sisters. So, as an 11 year old boy, I sat on a court stand and had to answer questions like, Has your father ever inappropriately touched you or your sisters? Um, do you love your grandmother? And of course I did, but if I said yes, was I going to be taken away from my dad? Um, these were things that I had to think about. Um, we, we moved past that stage. I get to my junior year of college. Um, the FBI investigates my dad and he ends up going to prison. Um, he was the director of the Alabama Organ Center and he had been doing some fraudulent things uh, regarding receiving kickbacks from uh, one of the institutions he was involved in. So I moved in with my aunt and uncle, and my two cousins, and I felt exposed because I had built this identity around my dad's profession and the money we had. and. Um, I just didn't really know who I was, um, and that was hard. That was really hard. I really had to dig deep and find uh, what I was to myself. Um, my dad came back my senior year. He got to see me walk, which was awesome, from uh, high school. I went off to college, and then uh, the last big obstacle, I guess, that um, I think characterizes my life is uh, I came out as gay my freshman year of, of college. And in Alabama, um, even now, but especially four or five years ago when we were in college, it was, uh, it was rough. Um, and so I lost some friends, but I felt free because um, I had finally started to realize who I was and what I wanted to be in life. Um, so I know that was a lot, <laughs> but it's part of my story. Um, and I think it's important that we acknowledge those things. But a quick break, I do do things that are fun and are exciting. <laughs> so these are some friends from school um, and college and in high school. I like to go to the beach a lot. It's fun. There's so many beach pictures. Um, these are those same friends now um, that I still keep in touch with from high school and college. A lot of dancing at weddings because remember, everybody in Alabama gets married early. So <laughs> we're all. They're all married, <laughs> besides me. Um, <laughs> these are some of my uh, happy kiddos that I got to help in the Bible study um, that we did in Tuscaloosa. Um, I love them dearly, and they have stories that will rock your world also. Um, and then all of you that I have got to meet here, um, you are some of my biggest joys. And although this is my last meeting, I know the friendships that I made here will be things that last forever. Um, but, uh, 
the advice I want to leave with you if you are trying to um, figure out how to share your story with someone else, listen first. Um, not everybody may be at the place that you think they are when you're trying to explain or give them advice. So it's important to hear where they're coming from first and dictate how you share your experiences from where they're at. Start with, I felt. I try to do that with every um, big moment that I just shared with you. Um, and I think it's important that you all think about that in your own brains because my divorce, for, or my parents' divorce, I didn't really feel anything. But some people in this room, you might have had parents that are divorced and it was really traumatic for you. So I don't need to come off as um, inauthentic if you tell me that and then I try and pretend that, oh yeah, my experience was the same, because it wasn't. Um, and smile, because you've made it this far, and I know you've all gone through difficult things too, and people that are going through those same hard things just wanna know that they'll be okay, and sometimes the best thing that you can do is just smile about that. And then, um, cliche, but the last thing, wear your heart on your sleeve, because although all of you raised your hands that you said you wish you would have said something in those interactions with people that have maybe felt something similar to you before. Um, sometimes just being yourself and being authentic, being vulnerable in how you act is enough and you don't need words. And when I think about my mom's funeral and the line of people that were standing out of the church, um, I know it was because of how she lived and not anything she ever said. So thank you.